All right, I apologize. My paper is not as crisp as it usually is, but that's okay, because today I'm explaining what KW is, and it's the ion product constant for water. What is it actually, though? It's actually the equilibrium constant for this equilibrium here, where water, liquid water, breaks up into H plus and OH minus. It's a reversible process and a process that's always happening in any solution. Some water breaks into the ions, some ions get back together to form the water. And it's a continuous process happening in equilibrium. You may also have seen it written this way, depending on how your teacher likes it. Two waters can collide to form an H H3O+, plus, which is exactly the same as this here, and an OH-. minus. Now, what does this actually mean? Do you remember what the equilibrium constant is? How the equilibrium constant relates to these particular species in a chemical equation. If you remember, KEQ is the concentrations of the products over the concentrations of the reactants. But one thing I'd like to remind you of is that, at least where I come from, you do not include liquids in your equilibrium expression. It's just H plus and OH minus, the aqueous concentrations of those two ions. And when it's for this particular equilibrium, the equilibrium we just showed you here, it gets a special name. That special name is KW. At 25 degrees, this is what it is. Accept it. It's 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. And if you're wondering, yes, this is related to the fact that the pH of water at 25 degrees Celsius is 7. Exactly half of that value. Not a coincidence. Who cares about KW anyways? Well, you will if you're ever given the concentration of OH- minus or H plus in a solution. Because look! You've got a mathematical equation relating KW and H plus and OH minus. Check it out. KW is the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus. Always 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. So, if you're given the concentration of H plus, how do you calculate the concentration of OH minus? Well, that's easy, just solve for OH minus here. How do I get rid of this? Oh, I take KW and divide it by the concentration of H plus. See how I rearranged the equation? I divided both sides by H plus. Pretty cool. And I can do the same here. KW divided by the concentration of OH minus. This is a constant, guys, KW. And if you're ever given either of these, you can interconvert them. Pretty cool if you're ever given one of those concentrations. Here's the last thing I want to say about KW, which is that it's affected by temperature. It is an equilibrium after all. At high temperature, the equilibrium is shifted to the left. Oh, geez, to the right. Ha! Huh. Remember that this is the equilibrium we're dealing with. H2O breaks up into H plus and OH minus. Higher temperatures, faster molecules, more energetic collisions, more breakup into these ions. What you'll notice is that at 60 degrees Celsius, we have a higher KW than 1 times 10 to the negative 14. I apologize, these are switched. I really wanted those where the other one was. At low temperature, the equilibrium is actually shifted to the left. 
because the molecules are moving a little more slowly and so the positive and negative ions have more of a chance to get back together without two waters breaking up and reforming them. In this case, Kw is lower. See? At zero, Kw is almost a tenth. I guess it's actually closer to a sixth of what it is at 25 degrees Celsius. So, what I'm saying really is that higher T leads to a higher KW. If you're really interested in the math behind that, take a look at our video about how the equilibrium constant K is changed by temperature. Until then, best of luck.